the last and imp most important thing probably to look at um, with respect to m vector and matrix derivatives is how the chain rule plays out in this case. And I should emphasize that this is just a generalization of the normal chain rule that you probably saw uh, in your, I don't know, kindergarten math class. So um, let's just quickly recap the, the normal vanilla chain rule. So if we just have scalars, so just single variables, then if we want to get the derivative of g with respect to x, but g actually depends on another variable u, and u is itself a function of x, then the chain rule for scalar states that we can take the partial derivative, ach, the normal derivative of u with respect to x, and then multiply that with a dg du. Now I always remember this is that, oh, if you cancel these out, then you end up with dg dx, um, which I'm never sure whether that's actually mathematically okay. So. Uh, let's just quickly look at this. So what you have here is you've got some variable g and we want to know if we wiggle x, if we perturb x a little bit, what's the influence on, on, on g? That's really what the, um, the derivative here says. But now it turns out that g is actually a function of another variable u and x actually influences g through u. Okay? And what the chain rule of scalars tells us, okay, well, we want to know if I wiggle x, what's the influence on g? You can do that by checking if I wiggle x, how much does u wiggle? And then basically uh, multiplying that with uh, a wiggle of u with respect to g. Okay, maybe I'm saying wiggle too much, but you probably get the point. And so you have this kind of chain that goes this way, um, where you, you want to see if I wiggle this, what happens here? And but it turns out that if I wiggle this, then I wiggle that, and that wiggles that, and the chain rule of scalars tells us how the wiggling is incorporated in order to get the um, answer that we want. You can um, generalize this to vectors, and then that equation looks like, like this. Okay. Now, so here we've got vector functions. We've got a, a, f um, a function g that kicks out a vector. g depends on another vector u, and u is actually a function of x, okay? And very similar to what we have here, you've got this, um, this rule that you um, multiply and the partial derivatives of u with respect to x with um, dg du, which looks very similar. Now, the important thing here is to remind yourself that this is actually a matrix, the transpose of the Jacobian, and so is this and this. So order matters, that's really important here. Okay, so that's the one important thing. Now, the other thing to note here is, remember when we're multiplying matrices together, you're actually summing up, um, you're basically multiplying the row, first row of this matrix with the first column of this matrix and you're summing them up, okay? Go and revise your grade two matrix calculus to see that. But, and, but what I want you to note there is, we're going to sum up a bunch of stuff but here there's no summation. So why the fudge are we summing up things here? And that comes from um, uh, the slightly more general case of the chain rule that's written down here. Okay, so here I want you to look at this case. This is a case where we still have an X and we still have G. And I want to get the, the partial derivative of G with respect to X. But now G is actually a function of two variables u1, u2, okay, and we have a little like influence graph running like this. Okay, now what happens here is we, if we wiggle x, we're actually wiggling u1 and we're wiggling u2, and you need to incorporate with this more general chain rule with two variables. You need to incorporate the basically the wiggling of, of u1 and the wiggling of u2. So you have these two paths that you basically need to sum up with this more um, general version of the chain rule. Okay, I hope that makes sense. This is the more general case of the chain rule. And then this is going even further because now instead of having scalars g and x, we've got a vector g and a, a, a vector x. And let's quickly scribble this out just so that it's really complete. So what you have here is you've got like a vector x. So you've got x1, x2, dot, 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 up to, I don't know, x capital D. And then you've got 
G1, G2, dot, 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 dot. Okay. And as a reminder, the first element in this matrix, remember this is a matrix of partial derivatives. The first element here, what would that be? That's the partial derivative of G1 with respect to X1. Okay. That's that element um, there, the 1, 1 element. Okay. Now, the important thing here is that x doesn't touch g directly. Instead, x goes through another vector, u. So you've got u1, u2, and so on. Okay. So x, this vector, influences u. So u1 is a function of x1 and x2 and x3. Okay. And so is u2. u2 is also a function of x1, x2, and x3. Okay. And so on. Okay. G1 is a function of the vector u, so G1 depends on u1, u2, uh, u3, and so on. Okay. Now, what happened here with two variables, when we wiggled x and we wanted to figure out what the influence is on g, we had to sum up the, these little um, terms for the different roots through, through this little graph. Now the same thing happens here, but except there's a lot of roots. So if we want to get the partial derivative of g1 with respect to x1, I'm basically going to wiggle x1, and I want to know how is it going to influence g1. Then I need to sum up its influence through u1, and I need to sum up its influence through u2, and I need to sum up its influence through u3, and so on. And all of that like, this is a lot of detail, I realize this now, but all of this is actually captured in this one um, little equation here, which is r really, really neat. Okay, so you, you, you're actually summing up all the roots and you're getting all of the partial, um, uh, partial derivatives all in one go by just um, um, running, that, um, running this equation. Really neat. Okay.